Hi everybody. I just wanted to uh, give you a brief rundown on how I approach the uh, longer um, implication chart for uh, the minimization of um, uh, state machines. Uh, so what I've done is I've taken the liberty of uh, doing a state machine uh, that numbers um, its symbols from A through I. And I thought we could do something where um, uh, I show this sort of hunting method that I use, which hunts for the most promising results first. We go for the uh, so-called long hanging fruit. So it says uh, A through I. I start at B and go through I with my uh, implication chart B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and finally I. So I'm going from the second letter to the last letter. And then I start horizontally going from the first letter to the penultimate letter. That's A through H. That's on the bottom. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. So we, we stop one short of I. And then we proceed to do a, um, a lower triangular matrix. And now, the uh, first thing you want to do, and this is a little bit different from other, what others do, is you see what you can eliminate. Uh, so, for example, A is different from C, E, F, and H because the outputs are different. So, C, E, F, and H. C, E, F, and H. Uh, B is different from C, E, F, and H. And we'll just do all the uh, ones first. G is different from H. And now we'll do the zeros. C is different from D, G, and I. So I got D, G, and I. This is supposed to be an I. Uh, moreover, I've got um, E is different from um, G and I. And um, F is different from G and I. And H is different from I. And so now we've gotten rid of um, a whole bunch of stuff. I put an accidental mark here under the GD intersection. So um, what we can do, uh, just to make that mark good and do something with it, let's take uh, G and D and take a look. It's H and H, so that's good. And it says A and B. So we look up A and B. I don't know anything about it, so let's look at that. That's C and E. And it's E and E, so E and E, that sounds pretty good. What's C and E? So I look up C and E. I don't know anything about it. So C and E, that's I and I. That looks pretty good. F and H. Let's now look up F and H. I don't know anything about it. So F and H is uh, C and E. Whoa. F and H is C and E. It's also D and G. Now let's look at D and G. D and G that's where we started. So now we've got something very interesting here, right? A and B depends on C and E. C and E depends on F and H. F and H depends on C and E, D and G. So between all of these uh, things, we have a sort of a, a, a recursive looking loop. So that's, a, that's sort of an interesting idea. Let's keep going. Uh, what about A and D? 
Let's see, A and D depends on E and H. A and D also depends on A and E. But A and E, we know, goes out. So that's okay. Uh, what about AG? So we take a look at AG. We have uh, EH. A and G also depends on uh, BE. But BE's got an X. So AG goes out. Let's take a look at that E, H. E and H. That's C and I. And it's also uh, F and D. C and I, that has an X in it. So that's pretty good. What about um, uh, A and I? Let's look at A and I. So that's E, F. And it's, um, that's an E. Um, A and I is also B, E. When I look up B, E, I see there's an X in it, so this gets an X right away. So let's look up uh, another one. How about this one? Uh, B, G. B and G. Well, B and G is C, H. And it's also, um, let's see now, E, B, E. Well, B, E's got an X in it. Let's go to look at that C, H. C and H is um, C and I. But C and I's got an X in it, so that gets an X. So now let's look at that B, I. Or actually, we go all the way up here, BD. BD is CH. CH has got an X in it, so that goes out right away. How about BI? BI is uh, CF. I don't know much about CF. Let's look up CF. CF is um, EI. EI has an X. Since BI has CF in it, that gets an X. Let's try uh, DE. DE is HI. HI has an X, so that gets an X. DF. DF has um, HE. HE has an X, so this gets an X. How about DH? H is um, CH, and CH has an X, so this gets an X. How about DI? DI is HF, and um, looks like HF depends on a couple of things. Let's see what else DI uh, works with. So DI uh, is um, HF, and it's also AB. But AB depends on CE. And CE depends on FH. And um, HF depends on uh, CE and DG. And DG depends on um, ID. G. DG. GD depends on AB. Wow. So let's go and do some more. Uh, I have um, F, E, so for, um, or E, F, if you like. I have um, E, I, and I have um, G, F. Looks like G, F has got an X in it, so this gets an X in it. So we've got a few things that, oh, we haven't done one. GI. Let's look at GI. That's HF. HF has um, promise. 
And what else could it be dependent on? Let's see, GI is also um, B2B. So, very interesting. It looks like um, G is equal to or equivalent to I. Um, F is equivalent to H. Okay. D is equivalent to G. Okay. C is equivalent to E. Okay. A is equivalent to B. And if uh, D is equivalent to G, then I must be equivalent to D. And what else do we have? I think that's it. So now what we can do is we can uh, say A is equivalent to B, therefore any reference to B can be replaced with A. So I can cross this out. And we can rewrite the whole thing if we like, but it's very good if we can uh, just sort of say this will no longer be needed because uh, we can now replace it with A. Um, e is wiped out because that's going to be replaced with C. I is going to be wiped out and replaced with D. G will be wiped out and replaced with D. H will be wiped out and replaced with F. I don't know if you can quite see that there. Let's, uh, let's move this over just a little. So now you can kind of see that what we have done is we've gotten ourselves down to one, two, three, four total states. And you can do the four states uh, presumably with only two bits. And that's a good reduction. Thank you very much.